Since the beginning of the 21st century, Chinese folk music has gone abroad and has been continuously performed on the world stage. This is Chinese Arhu player Deng Jiandong performing at a concert at the Golden Hall in Vienna at the beginning of 2008. As part of the concert, Deng played The Moon Over a Spring, the signature piece by a 20th century musician and composer named Ah Bing. It allowed Europeans to once again be immersed in the unique artistry of this Chinese masterpiece. Eu Mr. Deng is from Wuxi, which was also Ah Bing's hometown. So he naturally had a better sense of Ah Bing's music. When he talked about his performance afterwards, he recalled his spiritual pilgrimage to Wuxi. Chinese The spring in the title refers to the place where Ah Bing poured out his heart through the music of the Arhu. The moon over a spring is named after this spring. How was the moon over a spring composed and how did its fame spread? What story from Ah Bing's life is most associated with it? No one knows the exact time when the moon over a spring was created but it was definitely after Ah Bing became blind. The late Professor Li Song Shou at the School of Music in Nanjing Normal University would have been one of the first people to have heard this piece of music. He was 18 years younger than Ah Bing. He and Ah Bing both lived in Library Road near the Chong'an Temple. He was a frequent visitor to Ah Bing's house. Every day after school, Li Song Shou would take an arhu to Ah Bing at Lei Zun Hall. Ah Bing's side, he often had a few young children with him, but the people who were in Song Guan were not very well educated. When Song Guan was very happy, he took an arhu to Ah Bing and played the latest Chinese music, such as the Little Red Hand of the Little Red Hand, etc. Ah Bing was holding his head, Li Song Shou admired Ah Bing. In his book, Ah Bing, the Blind Composer, he wrote, When it comes to setting aside the tune and style, I have never met any Arhu musician whose playing skill can compare with Ah Bing's. Every time I listen to Ah Bing's music, 
It was a wonderful feast of art. However, Li Song Shou was puzzled that whenever he was asked about the name and background of the music, Ah Bing would drop his customary talkativeness and dodge the topic. It's music from a Buddhist temple, he would say. Many years later, Li asked another close friend of Ah Bing, Yang Yin Liu, about whether Ah Bing composed this music. In Mr. Young's opinion, Ah Bing wrote these works himself, or mixed in some music he had heard elsewhere and incorporated it into his music works. Li Song Sho couldn't understand why Ah Bing didn't want to admire this, since he had created such a beautiful original composition. Ah Bing in May Yi, the time, never composed his own work, which shows his heart was very divided. In art, he never considered himself to be a painter. 街头一族，而对他自己的身份有很自卑，所以从潜意识来讲，他不愿意把自己的作品和自己的身份联系起来。Mr. Young stated in his book *The Musical Collection of Ah Bing*, Ah Bing descended to a level of street entertainer. He was expelled from the Taoist temple. This statement turns out to be inconsistent with reality. Actually, Ah Bing's master Hua Qinghe had died in 1925. Before that, Ah Bing had taken over the running of Leizun Hall and become a Taoist abbot. Later, due to financial difficulties, he was forced to make a living as a street entertainer. Yang Yinliu said Ah Bing was sent to the temple. He was sincere and dedicated to the sound of the bell. 五十年代初期，阶级成分论。那么阿炳呢？其实他是雷震队的当家主持，他是有产的。那么在那个形式下面，不可能有产。所以呢，一定要把阿炳标注成一个苦大仇深的民间艺人，这样来推出二泉音乐，推出阿炳。Having gone from Taoist abbot to street entertainer. Ah Bing was regarded as a black sheep by many Wuxi residents. His music was regarded as no more than the tunes of a beggar. Taoist disciples were forbidden from imitating it or playing it. However, none of this affected Ah Bing's fame in Taoist music circles. As Yang said, Ah Bing's social status was determined by his musical talent. Ah Bing, one life, has a large amount of music recordings. 他最擅长的是琵琶拳，最拿手的是二胡拳，像龙船、听松、大浪、淘沙，特别是二泉音乐，名来都没有出名，也没有出谱。他是随心而来，这些都名字都是后来加上去的。李尚秀 grew up listening to Ah Bing's music. Meanwhile, Ah Bing was worn out by age. Looking at Ah Bing's emaciated face and his increasingly bent back, Mr. Li was worried. Once Ah Bing passed away, all his music and techniques would disappear as well. Then, Mr. Li went to study under Chou Shizhu, the director of the National Music Group at the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. Once after class. Mr. Cho lamented the lack of any decent solo works for the Arhu. He suggested collecting and collating material from the public for further analysis. Li Song Cho immediately thought of Ah Bing. He recommended him to Mr. Chu, who was very interested and proposed right away that Mr. Li should commit Ah Bing's music to paper. Upon his return to Wu Shi in 1947, Li Song Cho arranged a meeting with Ah Bing. Coincidentally, he also unexpectedly ran into Yang Yin Liu and his cousin Cao An He. During the eight years of the anti-Japanese war, Mr. Yang had moved south to Kunming. He was invited to return to Wu Shi to organize Shu Bu Chai, a Taoist music troupe, to perform in Shanghai. He invited Ah Bing to join him in Wu Shi. Shu Bu Chai, ne, is the last century, thirty years ago, in the Xiang Yu Southern Region. 无锡道教音乐的一个班社，那么他们呢是在无锡的各个道观的音乐高手组成的，他们身手不凡，技艺精巧。
，尽管年龄呢比阿炳小，但是阿炳跟他们交往非常密切，而这些十八下的成员呢，也都非常尊敬、尊重阿炳。In his book The Origin of Abing's Skills, Yang Yin Liu wrote. After the rehearsal, the musician suggested that Mr. Hua and I play a piece of music. He did not decline and took up the arhu and began playing a tune with me. Abing's performance fully expressed the emotion of the music and was executed with flawless artistry. Moreover, he added embellishments and variations and encouraged me to follow along. Our perfect cooperation brought thunderous applause. The Mr. Hua mentioned in the article was actually Ah Bing. Ah Bing's real name was Hua Yanjun. Because he was blind, people called him Blind Ah Bing. However, Taoist priests all respectfully addressed him as Mr. Hua. This was due to Ah Bing's extraordinary musical talent and his status in the world of Taoist religious music. Ah Bing's performance can be praised without one. The same tune. 没有两个相同的版本，二弦音乐就在这基础上面创作而成的。它体现一种深刻的主题，它柔和了无限的道教音乐、江南民歌，它是由多种音乐元素融合而成的。Yang Yin Liu marveled at Ah Bing's perfect artistic accomplishments. Li Song Shou took the chance to ask to transcribe some of Ah Bing's music, and was supported by Mr. Yang. Upon parting, Yang promised to record the music next time he returned to Wuxi. Ah Bing expressed his thanks over and over again, though he did not quite understand what recording his music meant. Li Songshou applauded the idea, saying that this was a good way to preserve Ah Bing's music. The task of transcribing Ah Bing's music was carried out. He wrote in his memoirs. I transcribed the scores to Ah Bing's house, explaining my intention. Ah Bing kept waving me away, saying, "Other people will laugh at my music; they're unworthy of being studied." I said, "You've been living in misery for decades. If now you're given the chance to find some friends who can appreciate your talents, don't you want to give it a try?" After hearing this, Ah Bing stood up, took his arhu. And began to play his nameless works, and I transcribed them quickly and sent them to Mr. Chu. Ever since then, Ah Bing's works have been played on my college campus. Ji Fu 工作持续了十天时间，记了三首二胡独奏曲和五首二胡合奏曲。每天中午，阿炳到李松手家里来拉琴，有时候还带上了酒和小菜。阿炳很能喝酒，每一次都能喝两到三斤超新黄酒。拉完琴，他还叫李松寿放别人的唱片给他听。他比较喜欢听贝多芬的《月光曲》和萨拉萨蒂的《流浪者之歌》。Due to the unstable situation, the taping process was delayed. Li Songshou didn't receive Yang Yin Liu's letter until two years later. Mr. Yang said that he had obtained a reel-to-reel -reel recorder, and he was coming to Wuxi. Mr. Li hurried back to Wuxi excitedly, and went straight to Ah Bing's house. He was shocked by Ah Bing's physical condition. Ah Bing had not touched a musical instrument for months. Chong Cui Bi, Ah Bing's wife. Explained what had been going on during the previous two years. In July 1948, the government of the Republic of China failed in its quest for monetary reform. This led to hyperinflation. Currency devaluation put ordinary people through a nightmare of suffering. Ah Bing stood in the street, denouncing what he called the evil currency. Deeply troubled by the soaring prices and eager to avoid public dissent. The authorities put him under house arrest. 解禁后的一天早晨啊，阿炳准备操琴上街去卖艺，他居然发现啊
他这个二虎山的那个呃蛇皮啊，给老鼠咬穿了；他那勤工的马尾也给老鼠咬断了。他呢就非常的懊恼，说：“哎呀，这样的话，我可能不能出去了。”所以呢，他就这个决定呢，不再卖艺了。就靠这个修玉器和为人家制火丹来谋生。在阿炳生活困难的时候，有个华光玉器社的老板叫阿胖。阿胖他是阿炳的粉丝，经常请阿炳到他的店里去修理和调整玉器。一来可以对阿炳进行接济，二来也可以促成自己的生意。所有的玉器经过阿炳的修理调整，发音格外通顺，发音格外好听。戏院还是纷纷愿意出大价钱买阿炳手中的钱，这样一来，阿炳也算是对阿胖的回报吧。In the late summer of 1950, Yang Yin Liu and his cousin packed a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and took a train south from Beijing to Wuxi. Their goal was to record some of Abing's music. Mr. Young's arrival made Ah Bing very excited. Early in the morning, he asked his wife to clean up their dilapidated house, thinking that they would record at his home. But Mr. Young said they should go to another, much quieter place. Yang 先生要为阿炳录音的事情，在当时的无锡可算是一大新闻。阿炳的粉丝好友们闻风而动，纷纷忙活起来。朱世光先生在华阿胖的店里拿来了一把好的新二胡，曹安虎先生也在华光玉器店为他拿来了一把好的琵琶，供阿炳做练习，还在《新戏日报》上登了预告，从而是有个居士，他以为他们选定了录音的地点。The recording location was at the Sansheng Pavilion on Guangchen Street. Sunsheng Pavilion no longer exists, but the oil painting at Abing's former residence shows what it looked like at the time. It also shows how he recorded the music. Inside the house, there was absolute silence. Mr. Yang turned on the recorder and gently tapped Abing's shoulder with his finger. The desolate and dull prelude was like a sigh from the bottom of Abing's heart. Everyone held their breath in anticipation. 当时参加录音的有八个人，他们是阿炳、杨应楼、曹安鹤、李松寿、朱世宽等。当时的《新闻日报》做了报道，有来了二三十个听众，他们觉得新奇和中大，但是他们谁也没有意意识到，他们将成为这一重要历史时刻的。见证者，可惜他们现在都已经去世了。For those present at the recording session, the moon over a spring was a familiar piece of music, and yet it also felt brand new. Its haunting melody had flowed through every street in Wuxi, with every note expressing the hardship of Abing's life. Li Songshou was impressed by what he had heard that day. He felt it far surpassed the snippets he had heard before. One o'clock, Yang Yinliu turned off the recording machine and asked Ah Bing, "What's your name?" Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. I'm from Xiaolala." Ah Bing said, "No name. I'm Xiao Yang. 问我阿炳，你经常在什么地方拉这个曲子？阿炳说：“我经常在回山二泉边上拉。”在座的朱世煌先生就提议叫二泉嘛。阿炳说：“广东音乐里有个乐曲叫《三潭印月》，这个印是印象的印。”杨英龙先生想了一想说：“回山二泉旁边有个印山湖，这个印就是反应的印。”你又经常在二泉拉这个随心、恰无美的曲子，不妨叫二泉音乐吧。阿炳想一想说：“好好，连连点头。”
还是杨先生有学问，就听你的吧。As if to verify the birth of the masterpiece, Young played back the piece. Upon hearing his own music echoing through the hall for the first time in his life, Abing stood up in surprise. He touched the recorder and muttered to himself, "This is my performance. This machine is incredible." Nonetheless. Young felt regret about the recording, because of the limited number of tapes they had brought with them. They were only able to record three Arhu pieces and three Pipa pieces. When they left, Young said they would bring more tapes and record more of Abing's music the following summer. Abing replied with great enthusiasm, "Let me practice." And the next time, I'll play the complete version of that well-known gong and drum piece from Jiangsu Province. Unfortunately, the next time would never come. Yang Yang Liu, 带回去的录音，在新中国成立后的音乐界引起了巨大反响。音乐家李济曾经提议邀请阿炳去中央音乐学院举办多种音乐会，可惜阿炳已经去世了。阿炳逝世于一九五零年十二月四日，终年五十七岁。在他去世后的一个多月，伴随他，他半世悲苦的董彻弟也离开了人世。阿炳 s life was miserable, as well as lucky. He lived to see the birth of the PRC. And his music gained the respect of the new society. It was no longer considered to be beggar's music played by a worthless street entertainer. Before he died, he finally had the chance to perform his own music on stage. The performance took place on September 23, 1950, at the invitation of a prestigious organization. Abing played the Arhu solo piece. The moon over a spring, in the back garden of the Taishan restaurant in Wuxi. It was the only time Ah Bing played on a public stage, and it was also the magnificent curtain call of his life.